Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the YouTube Business Academy podcast with your hosts, Ron and George. If you've got a regular nine to five job or you're on a small local business and you've been thinking, man, I should be online, then you're in the right spot. We like to think of YouTube as digital real estate and we will explain why just in a second here in the podcast. Imagine it's like having a prime piece of land, but online. Today, we will talk about how to grow on YouTube, how to get some help to make things simpler and how to turn it into a solid online business. For everyone out there wanting to get a foot in the online world, let's get to it together. All right, Ron, how are you today, man? Yeah, I'm doing great, actually. Uh, except for, again, the weather, it's getting colder here. Same for you, it's, it's freezing almost here. So uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to visit you in Spain uh, next month, like in two weeks, something like that. Oh yeah, and uh, looking forward to you. Yeah, will be fun. And business-wise, it's going great as well. Um, got some affiliate sales in, we can talk about it a little bit later. Channel is like stabilizing in terms of revenue, net revenue, but still an increase of around $700 compared to last month. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Um, and some updates about freelancers, but let's, let's get to that later. And, uh, how yeah. are things on your side? Yeah, everything is looking good on my end as well. The revenue on YouTube is pretty consistent because, you know, we're doing search. Um, I am now focusing more on Amazon Associates, aka Amazon Affiliates, um, because I'm basically innovating with the way that I want to make content. I want to implement a little bit of AI as well so I can save my time and the time of my recorders on the actual recording of the video. And I will be um, synthesizing my voice. I already tried that. If you guys are watching, listening, you can go to my main channel and you can check out some of the, I think I have like one video now, which is like about Amazon, um, vegetable choppers. Yeah, okay. you showed <laughs> me. Yeah. So wow. random. yeah. But you know, the reason I did that topic, it was very specific was because I'm, uh, those choppers are like a best selling item on Amazon. Makes sense. And how, I think the they competition have, is also pretty low, right? For videos. I'm not sure about, I'm not sure about the competition, but some of the product, one of the products I listed has 36,000 reviews, man. Oh, so that just shows that it has so many, yeah, so many, uh, but can, can you maybe so get to the, to the basics as well for people just tuning in? Like you were making videos about the vegetable chopper, but what do you do? Like you place a link, I know, but maybe for the listeners who don't know affiliate marketing. Yeah, for sure. So basically what I do is I, there are a couple of components, right? So let me kind of explain this for, you know, people who I'm assuming don't know much about it. Right. So first of all is you have Google and YouTube, which are like biggest search engines online, right? And people search for things all the time. Then you have Amazon, which is the biggest marketplace for products online with the highest conversion rate where basically every one of us single shops, right? So what I'm doing is I'm basically making a bridge between Google and YouTube, and I'm sending those people to Amazon. And Amazon says that if you are going to be sending us people and those people are going to be buying from our store, then you are going to earn commission. Now, I've talked about before in the previous episodes how I like to go for the high RPM, high paying affiliates, and I did. And I still get those like very big commissions. But the problem is that those affiliates, right? They have slowed down a little bit for me because I think number one, more people got into them. That's natural. Number two, um, there's not so much demand. Okay. There is some demand, of course, and I know there are websites and people who make good money with it, but there's like, it's not so much. If you're sending people like if, if, if a vegetable chopper has 36,000 reviews, then you bet that there's so many people yeah. daily searching for it, right? And for all the different kinds of products on Amazon. So the idea is that I'm first creating a piece of content. So a video, let's say people are searching for, and I don't come up with the topic myself, by the way, right? I look for data on the internet, what people are searching for. So let's say they're searching for best vegetable choppers. Okay. That's a search term. People are looking for that. So then... I make like a script. I record myself saying in this video, I'm going to show you the best vegetable choppers. Then I synthesize my voice or I make an AI version of it through something which is called 11 labs. And then I make the intro myself and then I make the headlines of each chapter. 
myself recording for the video. But then for the main body of the part, I'm going to be using AI voice. Very good. And what, 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 uh, in terms of like the screen recording? Screen what, recording? What will you show on I don't screen? Need, well, on the screen, I'm not going to be doing like classical B roll and stuff. I found that if you just have a concise script with some images of the products that you're talking about, like you can get away with that. Okay. It's not 100% like great quality. And someone who is doing like very good B roll editing with different images no, and course. videos of that product. The topic is also like, that's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I believe that people who are looking for best vegetable choppers, they want to get some kind of concise, clear comparison between the different ones and just make a decision about which one they want to go for. So also the reason why this works well is because it's something which is called transactional content. So transactional content we've talked about as with you before is something that people search right before they make a transaction, right? So say someone is in the market to buy a vegetable chopper. Okay. But they don't know if they want to go for, you know, X, Y, Z or whatever, ABC. Right. And then you say, Hey, I <laughs> reviewed <the> <laughs> ABC, X, Y, Z or whatever. And like, they're all good, but this one is better for this. This one is better for that. By the way, all the links are down in the description of this video. So then you click, you buy, and the person who has the video makes the commission. And the commission is, I think 15% or nay, nay, higher, nay, nay. lower. It's much lower. The oh. commission on Amazon is, I think it's like two and a half percent in the oh, kitchen really? category. So, yeah, yeah okay. so every category, every, every, so let's say if, if you, I calculated if an Amazon, if a vegetable chopper costs around $30, you're going to be making about a dollar commission for every sale. But if I'm right, the cookies, like the, the cookies will stay for 30 days in their browser. So if someone clicks your link, and they purchase two weeks later, you will still get a commission if I'm correct. And if they purchase something else together with it, like for example, yeah. they buy a TV of $500, I think you yeah. also get a percentage of, of the total card, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's obviously it's really complicated with the whole tracking and stuff. Uh, but the general terms are that, for example, if you send someone and they don't buy right away, but they add it to cards yeah. within 89 days, if they check ah, out and more. if they buy, you are going to get a commission that as well. And like you said as well, if they're buying, if they clicked on the vegetable chopper and then they ended up buying $10,000 worth of things there as well. Yeah, you're still going to get 2% or 2.5% from that. So the, the thing about Amazon is important to understand is that commissions are not high. But for the low commissions, you're compensating with what? Volume, yeah. Exactly. You're compensating with volume and with the highest conversion rates there are online. Yeah. 20% 20, 20 or something. It's crazy. Like I've been selling something. on it as well. It's insane. Exactly. Exactly. So like, yeah, you have, you know, maybe you make a dollar for one sale, but if you have a thousand videos, you know, ranking and sending traffic to Amazon every single day, 24 seven, right? and those people are always buying and buying and buying, then you have just a piece of the real estate like we've talked about, you know? Yeah, and if you leverage AI as well, like in a couple of months or weeks, you can literally make 100s or thousands of videos and they will yeah. all rank, they will get a lot of traffic eventually because there are like many household tools or like other products people first want to see a video about. So they have yeah. like the trust that the product will work for them. And then they basically get sold by the Amazon product page itself, by all the reviews and, and that kind of stuff. And they all long yeah. forgot about George, but George, yeah. you're like the gate, the gatekeeper, like, Hey, it's yeah. good to check out this product. And then Amazon yeah. will convince them. Yeah. The, the, the conversion on Amazon pages are, are crazy. So yeah, yeah, I think it's a good, good strategy, especially if you do the volume, because I thought the commission was higher, but it makes yeah. sense if, if those products have crazy volume and you make a lot of videos, then it will make up for it eventually. And you know, if you know me, you know, I'm a little bit hesitant about AI voice. Yeah. Uh, and I've talked about this before that I'm not a fan of it at all. But what changed my mind or like basically right now, I am in the process of testing my hypothesis. Okay. And my hypothesis is that I will still be able to rank with my uh, synthesized voice, right? Clone voice yeah. for, for the AI. But what convinced me is that number one, some search terms, if you search for like best vegetable chopper right now, the, be the the number one video is fully AI voice. And it's like a bad AI voice, man. It's like one of those old ones, you know, yeah. like one of the really bad ones. And if you listen to my video, it's like 
it's really close to my like voice. Sometimes it pronounces some words like really weirdly, not the way I would say, but it is so accurate because I have so many samples of my clear voice, like with good audio yeah, quality yeah. from the podcast and stuff. So I just uploaded it there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's fascinating. You can even use your face in the future. Maybe like there are many AI f like presenters, like now oh, you yeah. can still see they're kind of fake. But some are yeah. getting more realistic. And if you have like certain shots of your face, like it, it can yeah. look pretty real. So for example, yeah. if you would do products that maybe are a little bit more high ticket on Amazon, maybe mm. then it makes sense to add some sort of face to it. If it of course like looks real, but otherwise, yeah, why, why not? Like it's, it's worth the experiment and it's good yeah. to differentiate and it allows you to make crazy amount of volume. Of do, do crazy that of is yeah. the main thing about it, you know, because like what I'm doing now is like, okay, I have guys recording. I'm recording myself sometime as well, but like, I still want to build a fully automated system and I, and I want to really have so much volume. I want to put it, I want to test the hypothesis of AI voice. And if that ranks, if combination, like a hybrid version yeah. between real person and AI voice ranks and it gets good like to view ratio and it gets good clicks and everything, man, just, it, it will just, work. just watch, man, just wait. It's gonna, I'm going to build this crazy system of like, I want to get to hundred videos per day. Yeah, but it's possible. Like if you, you know, Quebocop though, that other YouTuber that has like 30 yeah. million views, like he basically cloned himself and he has like a, his real face, like as an AI in the video. And like first it was like an animated, he, he was like animated, but now yeah. he, it looks pretty real. And the voice is now also AI and it's becoming more and more real. Like it, it's, it's just a matter of time because before you like can't see the difference. And especially yeah. if people like don't know any better from you, for example, if they, yeah. if they see like th that kind of video the first time, they have no clue it is AI yeah. because it's your voice. It's basically not AI. It's just like, yeah, yeah, the reduplicating it's like a clone, yeah, yeah, clone, clone yeah. version of my voice. So it's still your voice. It just maybe yeah. like some intonation with words, maybe yeah, the script, like yeah. the pronunciation is a little bit different, exactly. but Hey, you're not a native English speaker, so you can always uh, blame it on that, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah. I think it's a, it's a good idea. And, uh, like I'm doing the opposite strategy. I'm doing less volume, but I'm more yeah. focused on longer in depth tutorials. So a little bit yeah. di different strategy. And uh, I've, I've been implementing also now, uh, like I'm more, more going deeper. I think I've mentioned this before in the previous episodes, I'm going more deeper on specific topics in terms of knowledge. Yeah. So I'm a freelancer mm -hmm. basically can do easier tutorials and more like quality tutorials. And I've also created like an ebook related to the topic. So when the introduction starts, my freelancer will say, Hey, I've created a, like a 20 page ebook on how to start with name a software basically. And then they go to a website and download the ebook and maybe some additional information will we'll talk about that. But then you basically like you're coming more from an authority position, I think towards the audience, if you have like additional resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm now trying that to see what it does. And so what's the purpose of the book again? It's more to show off like, Hey, we, we, we have our knowledge. We have something extra for you taking that extra step instead of like all the other tutorials, not doing it. And the ebook, like it's pretty easy to make eventually, like the, all the information is, is found online. You just need to package it nicely and present it in, in, in a You're certain going to be way. doing this for every topic. No, no, no. Because I have two main topics I'm focusing on right now. So I have two ebooks. Really? Yeah. But the ebook is more like a general beginner's guide. That's how you need to look at it. Ah, okay. And then you will and have, you're not charging anything. For no, it. no. It's just free of service just to showcase like, okay like my freelancer will basically present the ebook to showcase I have the knowledge because I also wrote an ebook. Hey, by the way, it's free to download. It's with all our branding of the channel. So it feels more interesting, like a real company. And I think by, by showing it maybe in the beginning, people think like, oh, they have a free ebook. They really know their stuff. So they continue yeah. watching, hopefully, uh, of course, the script needs to be good as well. So the, and, and I hired a, free, uh, a video editor as well to uh, focus on the first 30 seconds to hook them in. And then do some minor edits after like the 30 seconds after the hook. So, yeah. uh, upping the quality, making longer videos eventually as well. So yeah, let's see, uh, how that will turn out. Yeah. It's so interesting how, like, we're both doing the exact same thing, but we're doing completely different strategies, you yeah. know, 
like you're focusing kind of on like right now the longer videos and yeah. everything and i'm focusing more on like just one kind of amazon strategy I just want to kind of do that and i just started by the way so you know by the time the podcast comes out maybe i'll have a couple of videos on my channel uploaded oh and one thing i forgot to mention is that i'm going to be uploading those videos probably to my second channel okay why not my main one uh, well the reason why is <laughs> yeah, yeah risk. <laughs> risk avoidance you know like i don't want to because my channel is such a precious gem to me um like i don't mind uploading i just don't want to get into trouble like if i if the channel gets into trouble for ai voice or whatever yeah, i want the second channel to do that <laughs> But I think it should be safe, you know. I think I think as li as long as you're making transformative content and it's informational and it's not content somebody else is making already, I think you're pretty safe. In the end, it's also your voice, the the thing you're showing on the screen is made by yourself, so I think you're fine. Like if you like, for example, that Mister Dol Delphi channel, YouTube channel. Do you know that Dol the dolphin icon? Like that channel yeah. was making like search-based content as well, but it was only text. So for example, hey, can you help me change my WhatsApp photo in text? And then that. they will give the, the, the solution in text as well. And all those videos were like 30 seconds. And he had like, I don't know, 300,000 of those videos uploaded. And that looks like a content farm. Like there's no value given. It's like yeah. a basic text message conversation. Like then it makes sense. It will get like deactivated or, or demonetized. But I think you're yeah. pretty safe. But yeah, you never know, of course. Yeah, I'm very tempted to upload on the main, um, but maybe I'll start with the second one, see how it goes, see how the how it ranks. If it ranks well and there's like, I don't see you know any problems with monetization or anything, then I'm gonna upload it to the main channel. Yeah, why not? Yeah. So uh, I think it's a good strategy, but still, like you, in the end, you're also doing like affiliate marketing, and that's also what I'm doing. But yeah, you, yeah. it's like more strategies to it. And I also saw, by the way, in the in a close community, you also had a, a show, an uh, affiliate commission. So a big oh, yeah. one, one hundred forty dollars, I, I think. So, I had a ninety-two euro commission from Shopify. First one, let's go. Yeah, that, that's that's nice. And you, they will probably add, add up because the clicks are from three months ago, right? The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way this works, you guys don't know. Like we've been Ron and I've been promoting Shopify, so you just add the links and. Um, after three months, if those people who signed up with your link end up paying Shopify the first month, you're going to get a 200% uh, affiliate commission from their first payment. So let's say if they pay, you know, $29, you should get $58 commission in three months if they end up paying. So yeah, the, the weird thing finally is got the first for me, I'm getting 137 euros per sign up. <laughs> So yeah. is that like a different subscription they're getting then? Like maybe the second yeah, one? They have they have three different subscriptions ah, there. Got it. Exactly. So you're getting there. So they're probably signing up for the $69 one, if I'm correct. Yeah, then. but it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. $69. So then you're gonna get 200 percent of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. nice extra. Like affiliate marketing, if you have the traffic, or like you can also have affiliate marketing on, on top of mind and make videos for affiliate marketing. Like that's maybe also another that's way. my strategy. Yeah, that's your strategy. But yeah. if you have the traffic already, maybe on older videos, like it do, don't hurt to find affiliate offers that match it. But yeah, it's better way to do reverse and engineer it. I, I agree. So uh, yeah. it's nice to have some extra income next to uh, to my revenue because for me it's like like fifteen percent or something of the monthly revenue. Twenty percent. It's just extra. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it will grow, um, but really my focus for the next, you know, hopefully a couple of years is going to be just focusing on um, affiliate marketing and only on Amazon, right? I really want to just dominate the space. I want to innovate with the content and I want to send so much traffic to Amazon that, <laughs> you know, it's just going to be a money printer all yeah. day long. Yeah, and you will still have the YouTube AdSense extra. Yeah, like, that, will, that I want to be the cherry on top. Yeah, I think eventually in a couple of months or years, the art, like the YouTube AdSense, it can basically pay for your lifestyle. Like 5 yeah. to 10K a month is easily achievable. Or like 10K at least. Like we are going for 30K, yeah. by the way. It's still, it's still yeah. the goal. But then you have yes. all the extra affiliate things to maybe invest or like do fun things with. I think it's a good approach. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's uh, look at some of the questions that we have here prepared for today's uh, yeah. podcast. 
So we have a couple of things that we wanted to address. I don't know if we'll be able to get through all of them because we're probably most likely halfway through the podcast now. Yeah. But a um, couple of important kind of things that we thought about with Ron and, you know, we reverse engineered the question. So now I'm going to ask Ron a question and see how well he responds to this and what is his take on it. Okay. I prepared nothing. So <laughs> 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 prepared nothing. Okay. Um, so let's go with this one. Oftentimes people battle between long-term and short-term thinking. Why do you think that short-term thinking often leads to failure? Because often like great things take time to build. I think that's the whole okay. thing. So depends on, of course, what your goal is, but let's keep it with making money online. Like if you want to escape your nine to five or have a side hustle that will eventually, and you can stop with your, with, with your job, then you will at least need to have, I think 5k net per month to, to live comfortably, maybe travel a little bit, take care of your family. And like with short-term thinking, there's no way you're going to make 5k a month. Like I, I, I know no online business model where, where you can like within a week, you can, you can make that like maybe. You can get lucky with some crypto or, but that's like huge risk and no, no, uh, like no certainty, <laughs> like it's speculation, speculation. Like, yeah, indeed, you can go to an online casino and you can maybe win, but it's not a long-term consistent income that you eventually want. Because when you want to quit your nine to five, you need to have consistent income each single month because you need, need to pay your rent, your mortgage, your insurance, insurance, your, I don't know, like everything. So mm. if you're thinking short term, like it's very difficult to. To, to, to reach that basically. So you need to have to link to think long term, like, okay, six to 12 months from now, I want to make 5k a month. What kind of steps can I take this week? Like what kind of sub goals can I set for myself that will eventually bring myself to that bigger goal. And that's, I think how you should approach it. If you don't do it that way, then, or the 5k goal will be too overwhelming. Like how am I ever going to make 5k? Like it's a lot of money, or you will just simply, simply not have enough time to to hit that goal because it just takes certain steps to reach it. So you need to think long-term. Mm -hmm. Like it's, I think it's the only way, like, how do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a quote I can't remember. I think it was something like, you know, easy decisions, hard life, hard decisions, easy life. Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> it's yeah. kind of, it's kind yeah. of cliche, but you know, even just drawing the analogy, for example, every morning here, we've been, I've been swimming for almost a year now since March. And we're recording it in November. So in a couple of months, it's going to be exactly a year since I've been swimming in the lake. Every day. It doesn't matter. Every day. Oh, well, except for when I travel. Ah, like every day. <laughs> okay, but it's crazy. Nah, <laughs> no, but it, it's great, right? Yeah, it's and insane. so, and like, for example, wait, today. Wait, can I ask you a quick thing? Like, yeah. is it now a habit that you don't need to think about it, that you do it out, out of yourself? Oh, 100%. I think 100%. that also shows like in terms of business as well and life in general, like if things just become a habit. It becomes really yeah. easy because people might say to you like, what you're now swimming every day. It's like uh, almost freezing in Finland. Like how, how do you do it? But you just stand up. <laughs> it is freezing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I know it is freezing here. It's like zero degrees now. I mean, the, the, the lake has already ice on it, but, but what do you do and... with that voice that is saying like, George, it's freezing. <laughs> Why? Like, do you still have that voice or not anymore? Because it's a habit. Okay. So it doesn't get easier. Here's the thing. Swimming in the cold water doesn't get easier. Every time it's really hard. Some days it's a little bit easier. Some days it's a little bit harder, depending if it's the, like, if it's blowing yeah. really hard wind, um, because we are doing this outside. It's like in the lake and stuff. But what I did notice is that like, and I have a video about it on my channel as well, doing that hard thing in the morning, first thing in the morning, I just brush my teeth and I go there with my, with my friends. And we go at like 6.45, so we wake up at like 6.30, so it's also pretty early for most people, I guess. But anyway, the point is that if you do this one hard thing in the morning, which is just jumping into this freezing water of one degree, then the rest of the day doesn't seem so hard anymore, right? So you make a really hard thing first, and then, you know, your life is a little bit easier. If I would have woken up, kind of, you know, smoked a cigarette and just chilled <laughs> yeah. and, you know. It's not a good way to start your day. <laughs> Yeah, then it's like, okay, that's pretty easy to do in the morning. But, you know, then the whole kind of pacing for the day is set up like that, that I'm kind of just like, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, but don't you have like what I have? Like I have an ice bath here now. I'm, I'm now like I have on my whiteboard, like this, I'm now the sixth week in, like from every day doing it. 
But okay. I'm now like, for me now, it's like pretty, it's now part of the day. And the first three to four weeks, I'm like, yeah, let's go. And now I'm like, ah, yeah, it's the usual <laughs> thing. And I don't have like the yeah. energy anymore. And what I have after the ice, but like I go for two minutes and yeah. I'm like freezing for two hours long. Like I need to, <laughs> don't you have that as well? Like you need to wear a coat yes, and stuff I inside. Do. I do. I do. So I'm every, yeah. we're freezing every day, man. Yeah. So it's, but still you do it. Like, yeah, it's, it's funny, but I think doing the difficult stuff indeed makes the rest easier. And yeah. it's also like pretty crazy that we're living now in a time that you basically need to do things you don't like because li li the life is now so comfortable. So, yeah. so if you don't do it, you will basically become lazy without you noticing. And like your mind will basically become weak in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. And here Ron and I, we are big believers in strong minds. Uh, we believe that a strong mind is going to lead to everything that you ever wish for. So if you have a weak mind, please don't contact us. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, second question. It's about making money online. Yeah. Do you want to ask me this question? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I can. Like, sure. Let's go. Yeah, but then I will question it also from my own belief. But yes. George, let you... me ask you, <laughs> let me ask you and then, and then you can ask me that back. So Ron, do you think that in the modern world, in the digital era, do you think it is important and to what extent is this important? You think that it is for everyone to know how to make money online? I think it's a must like for everyone to at least make a single penny even online it doesn't matter like in which which way just try to experiment like how is the online money making making world like how does it look like and it can literally be anything it can be stock trading it can be like selling things on like craigslist i think that's like the u.s version of like a marketplace where you can sell used stuff like it can be like building a website or uh, do some freelancing work like once you've found a way to just make some money online, it opens many doors to you, I think, at least like mentally, like, oh, this is also a way to make money online. I don't always have to appear in an office or in a factory to make my money. Yeah. I don't always need to show up somewhere to, to earn my income. And I think if you learn to earn like that single dollar online, like even if it, if it, if it costed you $10 to earn that $1, <laughs> like you're, you know how this is with like Facebook ads yeah. and drop shipping. You still yeah. know like the fundamentals and the infrastructure of how to how to get to get that sale, and I think yeah. no understanding that that flow that structure allows you to to that it, it, it opens up doors to future opportunities basically. So I'm a big believer like that everyone should make at least a single dollar online or try to do his best because it's it's becoming easier and easier nowadays. And if you become good at it. You will eventually maybe can you can quit your job or you can become become your own boss because you're just like maybe you get addicted to it because that's what I had when I got my first sale mm, e-commerce. Me too. Yeah. So what do you think about it? Yeah, man, I think that's learning. Everyone should know how to make money online. It's like and when I say make money online, it doesn't even necessarily, like you said, have to be a you know full time thing, but you need to have the infrastructure in order to be able to even accept money online because that's a big thing that people don't realize is that like okay there is you can connect your bank to an adsense account and they if you get like adsense money they will pay you out but let's say for example that you know you want to do get into the coaching business right which i'm getting more now into and let's say that i'm i want to kind of get onto the call and i want to sell uh my coaching program and then I want to accept their their money, right? How, what am I going to do? Oh, can you just PayPal me the money? Oh, or can you just you know send me a check? No, of course not. You want to send them a link where they can kind of pay you the money, and then that will go through the whole kind of accounting. Uh, um, you love accounting. The word. <laughs> oh, administration. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> I'm now so deep into it, man. I, I upload the invoices like daily. Like, dang, dang, Ron, send me some more invoices, yeah. man. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, but it's but important. You, you yeah. need to have that, you yeah. know, and then you need to hustle. Like, you know, people talk about hustle culture, but what does that even mean online? Like, how can you hustle? One of the ways to hustle is to build up a persona online and then go out, reach out to people and offer them your help, then learn how to sell 
and then learn how to get accept their money and then kind of coach them and then add them to like a record some program there's a lot of moving parts and that's why i encourage you to if you have nothing and you've just been kind of sitting on the sideline and just you know listening to our podcast maybe or you've been you know wanting to get money online it really just you know comes to the first step okay what's the payment solution that i can have you know yeah but Do you know it but it can be even simpler like when i was like 16 out of 17 I was like flipping PlayStation 4s. So I was like yeah. looking at the online marketplaces, finding those things and then driving towards them. Like it's a little bit offline, but also online. Like you can just basically start with anything, I think. And but Ron, you, you, you used to be a, a gamer, a yeah. hustler gamer. Nah, not a gamer. Like <laughs> I sold them again. So not so much. No, 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 no. A little, Come a on. little on RuneScape. Tell, tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> you mean RuneScape or nah, well not? It's too, it's too uh, like if you're a little bit older, you have no clue what it is, that game. But uh, yeah. what, I, what I was saying, like, if, if you just start out with like basically anything, you're like, you're training your like your brain flexi flexibility. How do you call it? Like you're, you're, uh, you're mm. becoming more flexible in terms of way of thinking. Like, how can you make money? Oh, I can also try this. If you at least take the first step, it can be literally anything. So yeah. If you're not, if you haven't made like a single dollar online yet, you better start today. So that's a message yeah. to you listening right now. Yo, yeah, 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 for sure. Because making that first, like when someone gives you money online, that's the craziest feeling. If you go and you sell something offline, like you can do it, you know, you can get a hundred times more money, but just the fact that you, you know, made it online, that's, that's the, pff, everything changed. And for me, everything yeah, changed. The best is happened. even like when you're not busy with it. Like I had my first web shop yeah. as well when I was 17. And I remember like, I think I was sitting at school or something and I got like an email, boom, new order. Like the first one, yeah. like I'll, I'll never forget. You felt on top of the world. Yeah, especially <laughs> because you were like doing something completely different and money came in, in a way, like you've spent energy on setting something up and then it started yeah. paying for, for itself. So yeah. that's the power yeah. of whole, yeah, making money online basically. Yeah, and what's also very empowering is when you come up with something in your mind, yeah. then you make it and then that thing starts working and starts generating your yeah. money. To me, that's fascinating. It just shows because, you know, I've been reading so many of these self-help books and like Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich and his kind of main idea that everything starts in the mind. And the further I go into the self-development journey, the, the more I realize that it's true because, yeah, you first need to get the idea in the mind and then that materializes through your actions into the real world. And then if that idea was initially good, right, and you had other ideas that kind of, you know, fed, like, feed that and, and yeah, made yeah. it a good idea. Your first ideas are not going to be good. That's the thing about it. No, but and that's okay. What you're saying is, well, is very important. You need to take action like based on your ideas. Like what I don't like, sometimes people are quoting like Napoleon Hill, like uh, what's the name of the book again? Like uh, Get Rich, no? Not Think and Grow Rich. Get Rich or Die Trying, I wanted to say, but that's an album of 50 Cent. <laughs> but yeah, like I think in that book, he's like claiming indeed like, oh, you need to like visualize it. And basically everything starts from your mind. I agree, but the, the you need to avoid that you're thinking like, oh, I can just think. And then everything will come by itself. I think the action part yeah. is like the most important thing because like it's just about taking action in the beginning and it's not about becoming successful from that first action because you never no. will. So it's just trying as many things out and eventually uh, one will hit. It's like basically like the, yeah. the shotgun approach what I did in the beginning, like try things out and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And it needs to be okay with chaos. <laughs> you yeah. know, because when you're starting to do all these things, I mean, there's just so many. It's like sometimes I try to go and sort through like my Google Drive or something, but I don't even bother at this point because I just like straightforward, you know, there's going to be so many documents and yeah. files and images and some online footprint that, you know, blah, blah, it's just it's chaos, right? Like yeah. as you are sorting out through the chaos, something is going to kind of come out of it, you know, from the dirt emerges the little diamond that you want. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. But it's also like logical because there's so much information out there right now. And if you're just starting out, you have no clue what kind of information is true, what kind of information is relevant for you in this current situation. Like maybe you're yeah. watching videos that are not relevant for you at all because you're not at that stage yet. And I think that's becoming more of a challenge like when you're starting out right now, like where do you actually begin? 
and when do you know the beginning you're starting with is the right one for you you know so yeah that then again like having someone in your near you that already have walked your path i think is still like again super important because it can save you so much time like yeah it's crazy yeah 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 and and it's okay if you don't know what's the first step no, like no, no. it's great it's great if you can get guidance and if you can get help by the way we offer that if you want to check out the free training down below but of course like i didn't of course i bought programs as well i had you know i bought the ty lopez program i bought a bunch of programs from drop shippers when i wanted to get really good at that and you you need to do that as well but you know, even then, you know, you can lead a horse to the water, but you yeah. cannot make the, the horse drink. And that's like one of my favorite sayings is people, you know, get into the program, for example, and then they maybe expect me to do the work for them. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's like I can show you the knowledge, the things that you need to do, but it's up to you. No one is going to save you except for yourself. Yeah. But I think that's what also with a regular job. Like imagine getting hired for a nine to five and you send someone else like, hey, it's like the same thing. So I think it makes sense. This guy's going to be working yeah. for half of the payments. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but I think... Oh, uh, that's actually pretty sick. Getting 10 jobs and then hiring 10 people to work for you. It happened during uh, like COVID. People were like getting uh, like multiple jobs and they were just like getting other people work for them because they had lo no like physical meetup. Dude, but sick. one guy got caught doing it. I think he needed to pay back a lot of money, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, probably because it's like in the agreement, probably that you are the one who needs to do it. Yeah, and, yeah, and also with taxes and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah in interesting. But yeah, I, I agree. Like in the end, it all comes down to your own actions, and you just need to try as many things as possible, and one will work. Yeah. And like not quitting, like that's the only way to succeed, basically. Yeah. And I know it's super hard, road. super hard when you're like having a nine to five to find your free time. But if you're really saying to yourself like for weeks or months that you really want to quit your nine to five and you really want to earn money online and have an extra side income, like it's not coming by itself. So the only way is to sacrifice maybe some evenings or some weekends to mm. find out like what's, what's the kind of business model for you. And that just takes time. And also allow yourself to, to learn and like not look too much at, at, at other people like that are, that are further than you. Like it can be de yeah. demotivating maybe, but yeah. To me, that was really hard as well because I was looking at, you know, all these kids that were so much younger than me and they were seeming that like all of them were making these like millions of dollars. And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm trying to make like, you know, three, five K yeah. per month and I'm still not successful. And I'm like, you know, 24, 25. And then I seeing these like, you know, 17, 18 year old kids are like, yeah, you know, just sold uh, made my first million dollars with drop shipping. I'm like, I couldn't get it, you know? So eventually I stopped watching all of them, to be honest. Yeah. I don't watch any of that. Like I just watch stuff that now interests me, which is way different than it was back then. And a very, very good saying or like an approach or like a mental uh, model is when you're trying to learn something, don't go to the people who are most relevant to to you in your current case like if you want to learn how to make money online don't go and ask your five best friends right who are also probably you know don't don't know how to make money online how to do it instead go to the very best in that field to the top you know five ten people and study them and implement their mental models and learn how they make their money online of course it's going to be very different from you in the beginning in the initial stages so it kind of evolves there's an evolution right you first need to start with small small but the the principles the foundations need to be based on people who are the best right if you want to be you know if you want to build an e-commerce brand and you then want to sell it or you want to kind of be in e-commerce then go and study jeff bezos yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, like you, some people are just watching like those online gurus on YouTube and maybe yeah. their, their business model is making the YouTube videos, doing affiliate marketing and maybe selling courses. Well, it's maybe yeah. better to, to focus on like uh, CEOs of different companies. They probably have like a lot of interviews online because they went to like certain, uh, I don't know, events like speaking. Yeah. Like those are way more valuable. And often you see those videos, they have like a thousand views and like so, some YouTube guy, uh, like a hundred thousand so yeah really focus yeah. on who you are getting your information from because those yeah. guys selling courses like they they look they make it like a million dollars a month or a year but they they look flashy to get those sales so it's very misleading and they maybe not even know like 
what's the right approach for you so yeah yeah so listen listen to the best in the industry and have realistic goals as well <laughs> yeah yeah when I remember when I started, my, my, my goal was like, I want to make a hundred billion dollars. A billion, like, great. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> good, good luck making five first, you know, 5K. Yeah, step by step. I think if you aim for 5K a month, you're pretty much free in terms of thinking. Like you're not dependent on a job. And then also your mind opens up like for other business ventures or skill your current business. So really go for yeah. the 5K. I think it's a good approach. And I'm leaving to Spain tomorrow. Let's go. Really We're not nice. going to talk too much about it, but for the whole month of November, I'm leaving to Spain with my friend Hessel, who is also doing YouTube search in 10 days. Uh, my girlfriend is coming and then Ron hopefully is also going yeah, to come I'm to Spain calling. and we are going to visit Gibraltar. Gibraltar, how they say in Dutch? <laughs> Gibraltar, yeah. He brought that and then we're gonna yeah we'll see we'll just have fun maybe rent a nice car or something and enjoy life from there exactly and that's what it's what it's all about enjoying life and not being stuck in the freedom system. yeah if i look outside right now bro i'm so happy i'm leaving november yeah Jesus. like i it just reminds me like when when november approaches i remember you need to get a fuck out <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like my motivation get rekindles you know it kind of like okay this is the reason why you do everything. So you can just escape in November and, and chase the sun. You know? Yeah, you also need to do those things. Like otherwise, if you would stay stuck at home, you could rather just also get a job because like if you're stuck at home or stuck at, at an office, it's still the same. So you also need to enjoy like the freedom that you created for yourself. Yes, you need to make space for it. You know how they say, oh, I didn't have time for it. No, you didn't have time. You just didn't prioritize it. Same thing here. Like I'm in a position now where I can start doing these things, but I need to make time for them. I need to plan for them. You know, I need to put it all into place and I want to do them. So that's why, you know, I'm taking the action for it. Really good. Really nice action to take. <laughs> Much easier oh, than you. setting up your first uh, store or anything. Yeah. Hey, I did it for this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <true. laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching, listening and subscribing, and we will see you in the next week's yes. episode. Bye-bye.